we're going to walk through some basic calculation examples. We'll look at metric to metric conversions, making stock dilutions, and also using what you have available in the lab to dilute your stock solutions into working solutions. First we'll look at the metric conversion, metric to metric, and in metric conversions going from your base, which is going to be your meter, your gram, or your liter, to anything larger or smaller, all you need to do is move the decimal. So in the English system to go from feet to inches, or inches to feet, or feet to yards, you would need to do some multiplication and calculations. However, in metric, you just need to move the decimal. And the only thing you have to really keep straight is how many steps are in between each unit and which direction to move your decimal point. So the examples we'll look at, we'll start with 628 microliters. If we want to change that to mils, first we need to find microliters on our chart and we're moving to milliliters. In between them there are one, two, three steps and notice it's going from micro to milli, so it's going up the scale. Anytime you move up the scale, you move your decimal to the left. So our decimal right now is located here. Moving to the left, three jumps. We'll go one, two, three. So that puts our decimal in front of the six. So we end up with 0 0.628 milliliters being equal to 628 microliters. If we're going from um, milliliters to microliters, we'll start at milliliters and go down to microliters. Again, that's one, two, three jumps, but now we're going down the scale, so we're going to move our decimal point, which is right here, three skips to the right, so one, two, three, and fill in those empty places with zeros. So 54, one, two, three, zeros, and the next point is at the end. And that changes our milliliters to microliters. If we look at changing from mils to liters, very similar. Again, we're starting at milliliters. We're gonna go up here to liter, which is our base unit that we start from. So since we're Going up the scale, we're going to move our decimal to the left. So our decimal is right behind the five, and we're doing three jumps. So one, two, three jumps. One, two, three. So our decimal is out here. So we'll go zero point zero to hold that space to five liters equals 25 mils. The next type of calculation we want to review are how to uh, make solutions from scratch in the lab, so to make up your stock solutions. The formula for that is your moles needed out of a liter, and remember one liter equals a thousand milliliters, because for the most part you're going to um, need a certain number of milliliters, so you want to keep your units consistent. So you can substitute a thousand mils for that one liter. You're going to need the formula weight from the bottle of your reagent, and the formula weight is per one mole. So that's kind of a constant in your equation. So if we want to make up a hundred mil solution of two molar NaCl, my first step would be to go to the chemical cupboard, pull out my NaCl, take a look on the bottle to find the formula weight, and watch that carefully because it can differ um, depending on whether it's got water molecules included in the formula weight or not. So really watch that carefully and be sure of what you're using when you're measuring out your different solutions. To set up our calculation, we're looking for two moles. So we want two moles over our one mil or thousand milliliters. 
times our formula weight, so 58.44 over our 1 mole. Multiply that by how much we need. In this case, we want 100 mils of this solution, and that will tell us how many grams of our NaCl to weigh out in order to make this solution. And if you're doing this calculation the long way, notice that our mole units will cross themselves out, our milliliter units will cross out, and so we'll be left with our unit in grams at the end. So to figure this out, we could take 2 divided by 1,000 times 58.44 times 100, and that will give us 11.688, and that's the long way to carry out the equation. You could also do um, some shortcuts with this, and the shortcuts are all based on um, fractions of your liter, and if you have, we already know, 100 mils equals 1 liter, well, 250 mils would equal 1 fourth of a liter, 100 mils will equal 1 tenth of a liter, um, something like 50 mils would then equal 1 twentieth of a liter, and these are common solution volumes when you're mixing them up, and if you're using that for a shortcut, you will take your formula weight times your, your moles needed, and then divide that by the portion of the liter that you need. So if we're doing a shortcut for this calculation, we would take 58.44 grams times our moles needed, and in this case we need um, our two moles, divided by the portion of the liter needed. Since we need 100 milliliters, that gives us one tenth. So divide that by 10, and that will still give you 11.688 grams. And it gives you the same answer, even though it's a bit of a shortcut. And anytime you're mixing up solutions, make sure that you always write out how you calculated your grams needed in your lab notebook. So that way, in case you make any mathematical errors, you can go back and find that. Another situation you might encounter in making stock solutions is it's given in a percent. So in this example, I'm looking for 250 mils, um, but it gives me a percent, so of 10% NaOH in this example. To do these calculations, there are some standards you need to keep in mind. So 1% weight by weight is 1 gram over 100 grams. Weight by volume is 1 gram per mil, and volume by volume is 1 mil per milliliter. You use that times whatever you need in your solution, and that will tell you how many grams or how many milliliters, so or milliliters, depending on if what you're starting with is a solid or a liquid. So in our example, we're using 250 mils of our 10% NaOH, so we'll use this formula here. We'll do our 10%, which is what we, ha what we want, over 100 mils, So we're doing our 10% over 100, and we'll multiply that by our 250, because that's how many milliliters we need in our solution, and that equals uh, 25. And if it's a solid, that would be 25 grams that we would add to our 250 mils to make our 10% solution. If we happen to be working with a liquid, then we would add 25 mils of our liquid to, 200, to make 250 mils of our final volume.
if we already have available stock in the lab and we plan to use that to mix up working reagents such as buffers, then we'll need to use a slightly different calculation. And the formula is given here where our volume of the stock solution required is Vs, so that's how much we need, is equal to the concentration of our dilute so solution times the volume of our dilute solution that we need to make divided by the concentration of our stock solution. So if we want to make 250 mils of a 0.3 molar Tris 7.5, 0.2 molar NaCl, and 0.03 molar EDTA, we look around the lab and we find that what we have available already mixed up in our lab for just stock solutions, we have a 1 molar Tris, we have a 5 molar NaCl, and a half a mole EDTA. So to determine how much of each of these solutions to include in our final uh, total, we'll use our formula. So if we start with our Tris, the concentration that uh, we need to have is our 0 0.3 mole for our Tris, and then we'll multiply that by the volume of the solution that we need to make. So we need to make 250 mils, so times 250 mils, divided by um, the concentration of our stock, so our stock is in a 1 molar concentration. We calculate that out, we'll end up with 75 milliliters that we'll need to take out of our one molar tris and add to our buffer. Going on to the next thing, we already have 5 molar NaCl, but we only need 0.2 molar, so 0.2 molar times again, same volume, 250 mils divided by what we have, our 5 molar stock, and that will give us, we'll need 10 mils of that NaCl 5 molar stock to give us the correct um, moles in this buffer. Now our EDTA is only 0 0.03 and we have half a mole, so we'll go our 0 0.03 again times 250 mills, because that's our final volume that we want to achieve, divided by what we already have, so our 0 0.5 molar, and that will give us, we'll need 15 mils of that solution. And then the last thing we need to do, because if you add these up, they are not 250, because we need 250 milliliters for our total. So in most cases, making our buffer solutions in the lab, the reagent that we're going to add to finish this off is going to be water. So um, we'll need another 150 milliliters of water in order to give us our final 250 mil volume. If we're mixing up our uh, working reagents using percents, we still use the same formula and it's very similar to what we did in our last example. In this example, we want 100 mils of 37% ethanol and half um, of a molar of sodium acetate. So, starting with our ethanol, we want 37% in a volume of 100 mils, and we have already in stock 95% ethanol. I'll calculate that out, that gives us 38.95 mils that we'll need to take of our 95% ethanol. And to figure out our sodium acetate, how much of that, we need our 0 0.5 moles in a volume of 100 milliliters. Again, divided by what we already have, so we have a 3 molar solution, and that will give us 16.67 mils of our sodium acetate. I'll finish that off with water to give us a final volume of 100 mils, so we still need 
44.38 mils of water. So that should help you with the basic calculations in um, the lab. Please let me know if you have any additional questions.